Hey guys, well I wanted to do a quick study and uh, so I was thinking about doing a study on you know Christ being our example and how we were supposed to live as he lived and so I was looking at Tori's new topical textbook and the verses that he gives for you know Christ being our example and one of them was when Jesus washed the disciples feet and then I thought you know that's really good stuff and I kinda studied that before and I thought, you know, now I just want to focus on just that section. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I want us to meditate and remember what the Lord did and what he said in this instance. And so I'm going to be reading from John chapter 13, verse 4 through 17. And we're going to get right into the scene here when Jesus uh, cleans the disciples' feet. And so in verse 4 in John chapter 13... It reads, He riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he, said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. So, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Now I'm going to look at some of my notes here. Um, you know, I guess first of all I'll say that some... You know, the Catholic Church, I guess, and I don't know all the details, but some churches, primitive Baptists, they take this literally, they make it into a ceremony or a practice where they um, do foot washing services. And so they kind of, you know, they take it literally, and um, that's not what's being taught here, and we're going to talk about what is actually being taught here. But, um, you know, and I guess the Pope does some foot washing, um, you know, as kind of a sign of humility, but he does it, he doesn't do it to, you know, the lowest people. Uh, so, it's kind of interesting, but uh, I'm not really going to get into specifics of all that. I haven't even studied all that out, really. But um, those people that take this literally and turn it into some kind of a ceremony or some kind of a church ordinance, that's not what's being taught here. Nowhere in the Bible is that taught to make this into an ordinance. And so I think, uh, you know, from all these studies, I looked at a bunch of different commentaries and I kind of put together a study outline on my website. You know, it's not completely finished still, but um, one of the things I really found interesting and a brother I was talking to, he found interesting too, is the commentary pointed out, you know, about this conversation between the Lord and Peter. And they had a lot of interesting conversations. But here we see that Jesus, when he, when he comes to Simon Peter, um, you know, he's going to wash his feet, and Peter says, you know, he doesn't want him to do it. He says, no, I, you know, you shouldn't be washing my feet. You're the Lord, you know. And um, Jesus said, well, if you don't let me wash your feet, then you have no part with me. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Peter changes his mind. He's like, whoa, whoa, okay. He's like, now you know, wash my head and my hands, you know, wash all of me, basically, is what he's saying. <clears throat> and so, 
we see Peter's reaction there, you know, um, you know, and it's just all these instances with Peter's interesting. How you know he says he's not going to deny the Lord, and then he does deny the Lord. He goes back from one thing to the other. But what someone pointed out in the commentary here was that after Jesus said that you know if he doesn't wash his feet, then Peter has no part with him. Then you know it became very serious to Peter, and. This commentator thinks that Peter kind of sensed within himself his sinfulness and that he realized, you know, the seriousness of this and um, that's what why he changed his mind and now, you know, he wants to be completely washed. And uh, so it's kind of similar to Luke chapter 5 verse 8 when Peter said to the Lord, depart from me for I am a sinful man. You know, when he sensed his uncleanness inside of himself. And so, um, I think that's kind of what we see here, too. Is, you know, he was kind of convicted of that. And he, he realized, you know, I need to be washed all over then. Um, but Jesus said that those who are clean need not wash all over, only their feet. And so this is very interesting, what Jesus said. You know, why the feet... And so I'm going to say that I think that the feet represents the walk, our Christian walk in this life, um, because we're walking in this filthy world still. And, um, you know, that's filled with sin. And Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 says that we're to walk in the Spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So there's this constant need for being cleansed daily in our walk in this life. We need to continually walk in the Spirit. And so, you know, to see that there's a daily cleansing, too, we can look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse sixteen. Right, that's the wrong one. Put it right down. Hmm. Nope, that's first Corinthians, that's why. Okay, second Corinthians chapter four, verse sixteen says mm, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So there's a daily renewing. There's a daily need for cleansing. There's a daily need to ask the Lord for forgiveness. The Lord gives us that example in the Lord's Prayer. You know, each day, give us this day our daily bread. And, you know, forgive us our trespasses. So, and that's, um, you know, something to show. There's so much to learn from this passage. Just, um, you know, like sinless perfection. And they would say that, you know, you can't be saved without, you know, being perfect. But the Lord here said that, you know, Peter was clean. And so this is a good example, too, uh, to show that Peter was saved. And, you know, he was certain of that. He was already justified in the eyes of God. And so that's what the Lord meant when he said, you know, you're clean. And... uh you know, he said, but one of you aren't. He's speaking of Judas. And so some people say that when Peter denied the Lord later on, that he lost his salvation. And because Jesus said when you are converted, basically, when you, know, when you repent of this or whatever, when you change around, and people think that means conversion to salvation. So Peter was lost, or he was saved, and then he denied the Lord and lost his salvation, and he got saved again. No. The Lord said that he was clean. Okay. Um... Uh, and he needed not wash, only save his feet. So, so I think that you know that's a good proof to say that you know Peter was already saved and guaranteed that. Also, you know, there's a lot of talking about the Lord's deity here. You know, calling him Lord and Master, and he says, "I am Lord and Master," and. Um, you know, there's something to say about lordship salvation, how, you know, he was lord to them. 
But, so, talking about washing the feet, we have this walk, you know, as we're still here in this life, in this corrupt world, um, you know, we still need to be cleansed daily. You know, we sin. We have the guilt of sin that needs to be cleansed. So we need to always pray for forgiveness. Um, and so there's a sense in which God cleans, cleans us, obviously. You see that all over the Bible. And, um, you know, and Jesus washed their feet there. That's symbolic of that. There's a sense in which we cleanse ourselves. And so, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. And I just want to read this just because when I say that, you know, God cleans us and then there's a way that we clean our, there's a sense that we clean ourselves, that might sound kind of wrong, but you see in the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So, you know, we have to continually, you know, submit to the will of God. And um, so, you know, we have part in that in our walk. But there's also a sense in which we can cleanse others as well. And so we see that when Jesus said, you know, that we're to do this to others. And so, what was the real lesson that Jesus wanted to teach here? Well, uh, it's a lesson of love and humility is the biggest thing. Um, humbling yourself, not being high-minded. You know, uh, Matthew chapter 23, verse 11, Jesus said that he who is greatest shall be the servant. And so this is also about serving others. And, uh, you know, it could be in like a literal physical sense, like washing other people's feet. Um, you know, the whole washing people's feet thing, I guess it was really common back then, okay? They wore sandals and they're walking down dirt paths and stuff. And it's not so much like today where we have sidewalks and we have socks and shoes and all that. Um, you know, now wearing sandals and stuff is kind of a luxury if people want to do that. Um, there was much more of a need for it back then. But it was also like one of the lowliest things that, that somebody could do. And so Jesus, you know, being Lord and humbling himself to that was a great example, a very powerful example. And that's why, you know, Peter was like, no, be it far from you, you know, you shouldn't be washing my feet, you know, I should be washing yours, right? And um, <clears throat> so, I mean, it's, me it's mentioned in, in the New Testament one more time also, um, foot washing. It's mentioned in First Timothy I have to find that here. Okay. First Timothy five ten. First Timothy five ten. Talking about taking in a widow into the church, I guess. Well, verse ten says, "Well reported of." For good works, speaking of this widow, if she had brought up children, if she had lodged strangers, if she had washed the saints' feet, if she had reviled the afflicted, if she had diligently followed every good work. And so we see here more talking about service. These are other things besides just washing the saints' feet, lodged strangers, brought up children, relieve the afflicted. And so these are things that we could do for others as well. Um, you know, if given the opportunity, these are things that we should do. If there's a brother in need, we should do good works to all men, but especially, you know, the brothers. And so I want to look over a couple more passages that I think are um, relevant to this, I guess. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. Put 
this up. Okay, Philippians 2, verse 1 through 7 says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And so we see there, to be humble, not to think of ourselves, but to think of others. And, um, you know, there was a, a lot of strife. Uh, there was strife between the disciples, you know, who would be the greatest. And I mentioned the verse earlier, Jesus said that, you know, the greatest, who is greatest among you, shall be the, the servant. And so, you know, we all need this lesson to remember that Christ came as a servant and that we are to follow his example. <clears throat> and I'm trying to go back to the passage in John. So I want to look at that again. John 13. John 13. And so he said, you know, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. So, you know, this could be speaking of the Lord sending his disciples and the Lord saying, you know, I'm your Lord. And the disciples, you know, they're not greater than Jesus in the sense that Jesus humbled himself to wash their feet. So they should humble themselves to wash each other's feet, you know, to do good deeds for each other. And so I mentioned how, um, you know, there's like a sense in God which God cleanses us. There's a sense in which we cleanse ourselves. And I was talking about uh, perfecting holiness and purity. Okay, the spiritual side of this. There's a spiritual side um, that I think Jesus really wanted to get across. And so I want to look at another passage in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 through 10. Right, there it is. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 through 10. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be nothing, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing of him in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And so it talks about restoring a brother in the spirit of meekness. So, you know, there are spiritual ways which we assist and serve the brethren, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ as well, you know, praying for them. You know, in James it talks about praying for those who are sick, um, you know, exhorting one another. We see that ex over Scripture, you know, admonishing one another. It talks about in Corinthians, you know, singing hymns together and praises together. And these are spiritual things which we help cleanse and purify one another. And so uh, there's, that's the spiritual a aspect to the... Um, washing of the feet and the need for the daily cleansing uh, and that we are called to 
be servants to others, to do, you know, physical things, helping them in whatever ways we can, and also in spiritual ways. And so uh, that's just a great, beautiful thing. And, you know, the Lord said that, you know, happier are these who do them. You know, if you know them, happy are those who do who do who does this. You know, by serving um, the brothers and sisters, you know we get rewarded in it. Um, you know, that's going to satisfy us and help us as well. So, thank you for watching, and I just hope that you'll uh, go over the passage where Jesus washed their feet. Let me know what you think about the conversation between him and Peter. And, uh, you know, Jesus also said uh, to Peter, you know, that he, I don't know exactly how it was worded, but he said, you know, you don't really know <clears throat> exactly what I'm talking about now, but you will. And so, you know, I don't know exactly what I can say about that, but let me look at it again. You know, <laughs> said, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Hmm. Yeah, so that's interesting too. Um, anyways. So, I mean, it could be, you know, that Peter is not fully grasping what he's saying, or, you know, maybe he was kind of grasping what the Lord was saying, but the Lord was saying um, <clears throat> that, you know, you'll understand more in your Christian walk later on, uh, serving one another. Anyways, this is a very interesting um, <clears throat> passage of scripture and like I said there's there's so much that could so many different doctrines that could be you know debunked or, or defended from this so it's great and I'd like to go back and look over that more but I'm just gonna I'm just giving you what I've learned so far and going over those verses and stuff so just help us uh, I just want to pray that we just have the mind of Christ and that we you know continue to be followers of him and you know followed by his example and in humility and love and serving one another and you know um, that we're aware uh, you know of our the, our need for you know daily cleansing and um, just be thankful to God so thanks for watching guys and God bless